1943, Abraham Maslow proposed the famous theory of psychology called the hierarchy of needs. You have the basic needs at the bottom of the pyramid such as food, water, and rest. And at the top you have self-fulfillment needs such as creative activities or the pursuit of knowledge. According to the theory, our most basic level of needs must be met before we will strongly desire or focus on the secondary or higher level needs. The time I spend on my channel is creative and wonderfully fulfilling, so I am at a fortunate place in life according to the hierarchy of needs theory. But in the future, it may be harder to meet the most basic needs, namely food. The world's population is expected to grow to 9.7 billion people by 2050 according to the United Nations. A majority of this growth will come from developing countries who will continue to urbanize and see their incomes rise. Accounting for this growth in population and income, the demand for food is expected to rise by 70%, a demand that today's agricultural output could not sustain. The rise in income will mean people can afford to eat more meat, a commodity that requires vast amount of resources compared to other types of food. Take this juicy quarter pound burger patty. Each one requires 13 pounds of feed, 460 gallons of water, and almost 7 square meters of land to produce. And we are already using a lot of resources on agriculture today. The surface of the earth is 510 million square kilometers. Of that surface, 29% or 149 million square kilometers is land. Of that land, 71% or 104 million square kilometers is habitable land. Of that habitable land, about 50% or 51 million square kilometers is used for agriculture. 37% or 39 million square kilometers is forest and 11% or 12 million square kilometers is land full of shrubs and then 1% or 1.5 million square kilometers is urban land. And based on current farming methods, in order to meet a 70% increase in demand, we will have to increase land used for agriculture by 36 million square kilometers. So if we convert the 12 million square kilometers of land taken up by shrubs, we would still have to cut down 24 out of 39 million square kilometers of forest. And that's 61% of today's forest gone. And our current diet also plays a huge part in this. I already illustrated this earlier with the burger, but I want to break this down from a macro view. So let's take that 51 million square kilometers of land used for agriculture. 77% or 40 million square kilometers of that land is used for livestock. But livestock accounts for just 17% of the calories consumed globally. But I must point out that I eat meat and I love cheeseburgers, so I am presenting this in a factual manner and not from a pedestal. In any event, keeping up with global demand for food will be one of the major challenges we will face in the decades to come. This is why what's happening in the Netherlands is so vital for our future. Simply put, what's happening in the Netherlands is miraculous. The Netherlands is the 133rd largest country at over 42,000 square kilometers. But that's tiny compared to the largest countries such as Russia at 17 million square kilometers, Canada at almost 10 million, and the United States with 9.5 million. But despite its size, the Netherlands is the second highest exporter of agriculture and food products. In 2014, the Netherlands exported $92 billion worth of food, second only to the United States who exported $149 billion worth. The Netherlands used only 17 square kilometers of land to produce almost a million tons of tomatoes. That's an insane yield of close to 60,000 tons per square kilometer, which is by far the highest yield of tomatoes in the world. And their potato production in 2017 increased by 27% from the previous year, exceeding 4 million tons. But how do they achieve these incredible numbers? 
Well, it's no coincidence that the top agriculture research institute is located in the Netherlands. The Wageningen University and Research, or WUR, is so influential in agriculture that the surrounding region is referred to as the Silicon Valley of Agriculture, or simply Food Valley. And this influence is evident in the farms throughout the country. Some farms in the Netherlands are producing a yield of 20 tons of potatoes per acre, over twice the world's average at 9 tons per acre, with the help of precision farming. Precision farming is a farming management concept based on observing, measuring, and responding to inter- and intrafield variability in crops with the fundamental goal of optimizing returns on inputs while preserving resources. It involves creating comprehensive maps of crops based on collected data and the use of sensors in the fields, satellite imagery, GPS, drones, and other tools. These maps identify variations in crop yield, terrain features, organic matter content, moisture levels, nitrogen levels, and other categories. All of the data is analyzed so that farmers can optimize their decisions, such as what parts of the field need to be watered or fertilized, and where and when to plant a certain crop. Not only do these data-driven decisions maximize production, it also saves farmers money, resources, and time. The Netherlands agriculture also uses climate-controlled greenhouse complexes to help them be an agriculture powerhouse. These greenhouses offer a lot of advantages over fields, including water consumption. Some of the tomatoes farmed in greenhouses in the Netherlands are planted in basalt and chalk fibers instead of soil, which is a method called hydroponics. All of the water used is from rainwater, and each kilogram of tomatoes used less than 4 gallons compared to 16 gallons in fields. So the precision farming and hydroponic methods harnessed in the Netherlands will need to be gradually implemented throughout the world more and more in the coming decades, especially if we want to be able to feed 10 billion people by 2050. With the Netherlands paving the way for the future of farming, the future does not seem so bleak. But that being said, hunger is a major problem for many people today. At the moment, there are around 20 million people under the threat of famine in Nigeria, South Sudan, Somalia, and Yemen. The UN criteria for famine is at least 20% of households in the area face extreme food shortages with a limited ability to cope. The prevalence of acute malnutrition in children exceeds 30% and the death rate exceeds 2 persons per 10,000 persons per day. One of the last occurrences of famine was in Somalia caused by extreme drought where 285,000 people died. If you want to help fight hunger in the world today, please check out actionagainsthunger.org which is a top rated charity who has been fighting hunger for almost 40 years. Their link is in the description below. An outstanding 93 cents of every dollar goes to fighting hunger as they prevented 14.7 million children and their families from starving, helping them meet their most basic of needs. Alright, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey. So I've been thinking about my channel lately. I started Neil Scribe out of excitement for the future. I genuinely believe that the future is going to be fantastic, and my channel largely glamorizes the future. But it would be nonsensical for this channel not to acknowledge that we face many challenges ahead of us as a species. So moving forward from time to time, I'm going to cover some of the challenges ahead of us. And more importantly, I'm going to explore what the solutions are. So if you connect with my content and want to support this channel, you can visit my Patreon page in the description below. You can pledge as little as a dollar. Every bit helps. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next journey.